Joseph here with ClarionClavier.com. Today I wanted to talk to you about how to move your wrist with the pulse while you play the piano and why you should incorporate this into your practice. This practice tip is aimed at beginning pianists and intermediate pianists, but some advanced pianists might actually find this helpful as well. The basic idea of wrist movement is that you want to play the piano in such a way where your wrists aren't just rigid and locked and allow for no freedom of movement. We really need a fluid wrist to get to all of the advanced piano techniques that uh, classical repertoire demands. So the basic idea with the wrist movement, wrist pulling, um, or, sorry, I meant to say wrist dropping, is that you're gonna coordinate the dropping of your wrist with the pulling of the finger. And what this allows you to do is basically use gravity to assist the finger in the, in the actual playing of the note. So if you just play the notes with the fingers, you don't have nearly as much control or power as you do if you're actually incorporating a little bit of wrist movement too. So if you time it perfectly, the point at which you stop your wrist drop is gonna sort of recoil against how you might pull your finger and it sort of multiplies the force that you're um, exerting. And it allows for very powerful playing, but it also allows you to organize your beats with your body and get your body to work uh, for you rather than against you. So if you're a beginner, the best way to learn how to move your wrist while you play is to essentially choreograph it with a pulse. In some cases, if you don't, well, in a lot of cases really, if you don't choreograph your wrist movements and you're a beginner, you might move your wrist randomly, and if you move your wrist on an offbeat, it's very difficult to feel the timing of the piece. It stops you from being able to play fast, it stops you from being able to play fluidly, and you basically just want to avoid randomly moving your wrist. You need to move your wrist with the pulse um, if you're unable to maintain a totally neutral stance. And even if you are able to maintain a, a, a neutral wrist, I think in, in most classical music, you're going to want to get that fluidity in there. The easiest way to get started incorporating wrist movement into your practice is to use your technical routine like scales or pentascales or something like that. And if you're a beginner, you can do a wrist drop on every note. So play quarter notes or actually play like whole notes, like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and sort of use that huge amount of space on each beat to choreograph the dropping of the wrist with the pressing of the note. And every time you are about to play a note, you have to preface that with um, a raised wrist. So you're gonna raise your wrist and then drop. Raise, drop, raise, drop, raise, drop, and so on. While trying not to drop too far, don't let your thumbs hang back like this. You wanna still keep your thumbs uh, forward. So on a pentascale, I'll show you. first start out, you have to move your wrist several inches to really, or it's helpful to move your wrist several inches in order to feel and time the movement. But the better you get at it, the smaller your, your wrist movements will be. When you're playing really fast pieces, uh, your wrist movements will be basically imperceptible to somebody that's watching you. With regards to scale playing, like let's say you're doing a one octave scale. I'll, I'll do um, an E major scale. The same thing would apply, but you bring the thumb over and then play similarly to you would with the pentascale. Now, as I mentioned before, the reason that we want to do this and get comfortable with this idea is so that we avoid moving at the wrong movement and having these jittery, spastic sounding pieces. After you've mastered one octave scales and you're ready to move on to two and three and four octave scales and you're comfortable with the wrist movements, you can actually try keeping the wrist movement consistent on the quarter note pulse, but splitting the beat one way, two ways, three ways, and four ways and playing one octave, two octaves, three octaves, or four octaves respectively. So I'll demonstrate what this will look like and uh, one of the benefits of doing this. So I'll play that same E major scale again, I'll just come lower here.
faster you go, the smaller the wrist movement is going to end up uh, becoming. As far as music goes, there's a number of ways to use and time your wrist movements. If you're playing a slow piece, such as like a Bach minuet, you might do it on every note. Now keep in mind, I'm exaggerating the movement for the purposes of the video. I wouldn't actually move this much, but when you're learning how to do it, it does help to move that much. The better you get, the smaller the movements will be. And that's true of really all of your piano technique. The better you get, the smaller all of your technique is and that allows you to go so much faster because the technique doesn't take so much time. Um, another example is if I played like a nocturne, um, that's a good example. Both left and right hand on a nocturne is gonna be using a lot of wrist mo motion. Now, if you have a classical piece um, and you're playing 16th notes and you're uh, keeping a quarter note pulse, that's a good example of how to really organize fast music and time it and choreograph it with your wrist drops. So to demonstrate this, I'll play a little bit of uh, the middle part of a Haydn sonata in D major. So it goes like this. And so on. So how we might start learning that. We did drop on every four. smaller movements. It's such a helpful way to learn how to play, uh, especially classical music, but fast music in general, using your wrist drops to organize the pulse. It, it multiplies your efforts. It's the, difference, it's the difference between somebody being able to play really fast and not fast at all. It's not, a, uh, it's not a subtle thing. It's like a light switch. Once you're able to use your wrist properly, you can play like four times as fast because you can organize um, bursts of notes against like slow gestures and that keeps the piece you know it keeps uh, an ease in your technique while you're basically like setting up the piano on fire with your playing um, and it's one of the things I notice when I watch some of these amazing pianists on YouTube is they're able to go so incredibly fast but they look like it's effortless and it's partially because of techniques such as uh, this where you're organizing large groups of notes against you know um, smaller, slower movements, and it unlocks, you know, upper levels of piano playing for you. So if you found a video, video like this helpful, I would encourage you to like the video and subscribe. Uh, help me out. It'll get me more reach and you'll be notified when I make new videos. And if you have a question or comment about this technique, I would love if you would leave one below. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, have a good day.